So this video is going to cover the fourth stage of the extended essay writing process, whereas the first stage was brainstorming, coming up with different possible ideas of topics to investigate, and the second stage was choosing a subject to look at that topic through a lens in the camera to take a different picture, uh, and the third step was collecting research. The fourth step is making a question. And one way to think of the question is it's a path. It's making meaning out of loads of information, um, which you might think of as the forest, and guiding you to only look at a few certain things. Because, uh, let's face it, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of texts out there. So that's kind of the purpose of crafting a question. And again, our journey kind of starts at the IB program at AST page, the extended essay page. Again, there's a bunch of different links here. I've been changing some of these around recently, trying to clean everything up and streamline it. But there should be a link here saying crafting the question. And this is kind of at the focus stage of our research. So if we click on that, it opens up and it starts with a chart here. And the chart kind of reminds us that you know, these are the different tasks associated with writing um, the extended essay. So the first one here we could think of, you know, the starting the task, the brainstorming. Here we can think of kind of settling on a topic, thinking about what subject we're going to look at that topic through, what are the expectations of that subject, and then starting to do some research. And now we're on a, a step really, de you know, dedicated to focus. And students might feel you know, as they move from topic exploration, which is doing a ton of research, towards making their question, they might feel confusion, frustration, and doubt, because they might start encountering so many different sources and information that they don't really know how to make sense of it. So this step is a very important one. It might even be the most important step, because anyone can collect a lot of information and just write it down, but to pick a narrow question, to examine something in 4,000 words, you know, that's really a skill that's very difficult. So this image here comes through uh, Carol Kohlthau's work on uh, seeking meaning among an abundance of information, which is exactly what the extended essay is, because after topic exploration, after having done the research, you're just going to have so much information. So you're really thinking about how do you make sense of it. So this page kind of continues with some of the previous videos and the examples that are there, and I'm not going to read all this information. Uh, I'm just going to kind of highlight it, but it is written down. Um, in, you know, and I do advise you know students really read it and think about it. It isn't that long. I tried to really get to the point. But continuing from the previous videos, we've got some examples. Uh, and the example that I used in the research stage was Emiliano Zapata and the Mexican Revolution. So you know you've already done your research on him, you know, or or I did in my fictional you know example, collected some sources, and I and I know that I know a bunch of stuff about him but I don't know exactly what my question is going to be. I know that I'm going to look at them through the subject of history, and I've looked at some examples of what history essay looks like, and, and the skills, and I've thought about the skills associated with his, history essay, but I don't know exactly what my questions are going to be. Uh, so usually the best way to do this is to come up with a few different possible questions. So even before the questions, you might start thinking, what are some different like areas or topics about Emiliano Zapata in the Mexican Revolution that I could make these questions about. So I kind of made a list of some of them. Because you'll start to realize that if topics are large, there's many different areas of the topic that you can focus the question on. So for example, a very large topic such as the Cold War may have smaller areas like uh, Vietnam or Korea or the policy of containment or the policy of detente or Sino-US relationships or tensions between the USSR and the US. So there's lots of different avenues to break big topics down into smaller subtopics. So with Emiliano Zapata, I've got some of those subtopics that I came up with. Again, this list isn't exhaustive. It doesn't include everything. But it's, it's a way of breaking down a big idea into smaller ideas, getting towards something that's more appropriate for 4,000 words. So, uh, the first one is Emiliano Zapata's agrarian focused ideology, really taking a look at the Plan de Ayala. The next one is Emiliano Zapata's inability to make important strategic alliances and partnerships. So there I was kind of thinking of focusing on maybe like Aguas Calientes and, uh, you know, the, the, 
disunity or the weakness of his relationship with Pancho Villa. And then here I have Emiliano Zapata's role in Francisco Madero's downfall, the first regime after the Porfiriato. And then my fourth subtopic that I came up with was uh, Zapata's conflict with Carranza, maybe tying in Obregón there, and looking at Zapata's disagreement with the Plan de Guadalupe. So then, after you've kind of, after students have kind of broken their big topic down to smaller subtopics, they can start looking at some different question starters that could be used to start their question. And a lot of this is something that students already do in history when they're doing their historical investigation. A lot of attention should be paid to these, these question starters because depending on which question starter is chosen, different information is asked for. So in the list of possible questions that I have down here, I've chosen some different question starters. Um, in addition to this, students should remember that this should be a controversial, analytical, multi-perspective piece. This is not something that is going to be a book report. This is not just collecting tons of information and just vomiting it without having any organization or meaning to that, to that information. The purpose here is not to tell a narrative of events, but to take information and evidence and examine controversy or otherwise do analysis. Uh, in this way, the IB program sets up the extended essay to be very similar to like the TOK essay insofar as you're looking at a topic from multiple perspectives. You're kind of looking at an argument and a counterargument. And in this example, anyway, with Emiliano Zapata and the subject of history, a lot of analysis comes out through making historical arguments and different areas of history. You know, I didn't write them down here, but they could be like causation, consequence, significance, perspective. These are all things that could be argued about. Continuity, change, like how much did things change? To what extent um, did they stay the same? What were the roles of different causes? For example, World War I, it had many different causes. Were some causes more significant than others? Were, were there interconnections between the different causes? So that's kind of what analysis looks like in history. And then, of course, in different subjects, analysis you know, is going to look differently. That's kind of the importance of step number two, which is thinking about your subject and the demands of your subject. So these are kind of some possible questions that I came up with. These are all questions that use these question starters. These are all questions that focus on the subtopic. These are all questions that are about Emiliano Zapata in the Mexican Revolution. And these are all questions that are controversial, meaning that they're not going to lead to a gigantic book report, which is not, again, the purpose of the extended essay. So again, it's not maybe really important to read all of these questions to the listeners, but uh, it's important to maybe think that they're very focused. Like, for example, the first one, for what reasons and with what success did Emiliano Zapata appeal to landless peasants in southern in the southern Mexican states of Morelos, Chiapas, and Oaxaca? It's very focused um, because it's, it's very regional, and it's looking at, you know, his ideology, right? Because this is 1A, so it was focused on my subtopic 1, which was all about his ideology. Uh, another way that you can narrow things, uh, not only geographically, might be time. Uh, if you go narrower on time, you kind of get more focused. So this is kind of what the process looks like uh, in devising a few different questions. And then, you know, hopefully after students come up with a list of different possible questions that they think are worthy of investigation, they can then talk with their supervisor about the advantages and disadvantages of different questions. And then ultimately they can settle on a question. And... Uh, and usually after students have a question, after they have focus, they, they feel, you know, direction and confidence. Because, you know, once you move from Emiliano Zapata in the Mexican Revolution to, you know, for example, uh, you know, I don't know, I'll pick a different one. How well were Emiliano Zapata's uh, ideological desires actualized in Mexico by 1940? I mean, you're much more focused. You're going to feel a lot of confidence, and that's going to set you up for, you know, increased interest and success and pertinent information rather than just like relevant information. So the chart here is actually very helpful at kind of cataloging uh, feelings, thoughts, actions, and the different steps involved in the research process.